This is cybersecurity, let's get started. Cybersecurity is the processes, practices, and technologies designed to protect networks, computers, programs, and data from attack, damage, and unauthorized access. Quite long of a definition if you ask me, so just think of 343, just like the studio that made Halo. There are a bunch of cybersecurity threats, and knowing some of you, you'll have no clue. So a quick little acronym that even a child can remember is Will More People Understand Running Malware Sucks? If you still can't remember these through this method, then God help you. Let's take a look at some of the methods in more detail. Firstly, we have social engineering. By definition, it's the art of manipulating people, so they give up confidential information. We have three examples of this, first up being blagging. The act of creating a situation or invented scenario that engages the victim to disclose confidential information. Ways to protect yourself would be to verify who you're actually talking to, and train the staff to make sure they aren't fooled easily. Next up we have phishing, this is a technique of fraudulently obtaining information, usually done through email or SMS, sounds a lot like cat phishing so you can remind yourself through that, but remember that phishing sounds like phishing, so the bait is the fraud, trying to act all innocent, and you're the fish, that's a bit too gullible, and ends up biting into that bait and giving off all your information. Ways to protect yourself would be to spot dodgy emails that aren't spelt correctly, and check the email address to make sure it's actually the person sending it. Shouldering, literally looking over someone's shoulder and observing private information. It usually happens at ATMs and you get their PIN number, no way you can really forget it. Ways to protect yourself would be obviously being more aware and reduce the view of input, so just covering your hand when entering PINs. If you get this wrong, then uh, quit computer science while you still have a chance. Now we've got malware. Definition's a bit weird to remember, but everything else is common sense. By definition, it's an umbrella term to refer to a variety of hostile or intrusive software. The ones we need to know are Trojan, Virus, and Spyware. Trojan, well, you remember the whole story with the Greeks, don't you? So this should be easy to remember. Software that looks legitimate but is in fact malicious. Virus, they have a tendency to replicate and destroy everything in its path, causing usually corrupted systems and destroyed data. Spyware, and it's in its name, software that spies on the user. They like the word covertly, which in a nutshell just means sneakily. So spyware just covertly obtains data on a user, covertly through their hardware, since that's where all the data is usually stored. Don't sweat about this definition, just remember everything else at least. Now how do we protect against these a lot? Well, for all of these basically just educate everyone about it. Be more aware, regular updates, installing antivirus and firewalls, etc. All the basics, pretty much. And now we get onto everything else. Re starting off, we have removable media. Stuff like USBs can have malware on, and therefore cause loads of issues like compromising our confidential information. Unpatched or outdated software, well, if it ain't updated, it'll have bugs and flaws, and just like our games, they need to be updated to fix these. If not, then they can be exploited by hackers. This should also be common sense, really. Farming, it intends to redirect the website traffic to a fake website, so people who are trying to access the actual website will end up going to the fake one instead. Try to spot errors in the website and make sure that the URL is spelled correct to make sure you ain't getting duped. Sometimes the fake website won't be running HTTPS either, so look out for this as data you enter on the site will be written in plain text for everyone to see. And then we have misconfigured access rights. You have more access than you should do, and this could lead to malware being put on the system. This is why we restrict access to only the things we need, stuff like being able to access the command prompt and edit files is a major risk. An example of this would be how you lot have access to this, and it isn't blocked. We all know you ain't even old enough for it yet. And finally, we have weak or default passwords. If they're weak, they're easy to brute force, and if they're default, they can easily be searched up as it is the default. Despite all of these, there are methods to mitigate the threats. Even I need reminding on how to remember these, so an acronym for you would be Being Careful Puts Everything Bad Away. Being is a placeholder, I couldn't think of anything else otherwise. Not the best, but something's better than nothing, I guess. Capture. If you're a robot, you wouldn't really be watching this right now. It's always a stupid thing that asks you to click the picture, but takes several attempts to actually do it. Helps prevent bots from abusing the creation or uh, good from a business. Biometric measures, things like fingerprints make passwords practically irrelevant as they're really hard to lose. I mean, like, how do you lose a finger realistically? Or an eye? Sorry if that offended anyone. Password systems, they're just login systems. Make sure that the user accessing the network is verified. 
They can add rules to make sure that the password is stronger and also make sure that any malware installed can be traced back to the edit that did it. Email confirmations, you know the process obviously, helps make sure that the user is valid and prevents bots from abusing the creation of accounts. But I mean ultimately these are just fancy ways to say I'm a check if the guy's a robot or not. And finally we have automatic software updates, patches the error to make sure its security is up to date and automatic so it's done as fast as possible and make sure that people don't keep pressing that update later button. And now we're on to our last section, penetration testing. The process of attempting to gain access to resources without the knowledge of usernames, passwords and other means of access helps test how strong and secure the network actually is. There's two types you need to know, first one being whether the person slash team has knowledge of possibly basic credentials for the target system. This simulates an attack inside the network. The other one obviously is the opposite of everything I just said then. They don't know anything, which simulates someone outside the system. Just remember one, and then you'll know the other one is opposite of everything you just remembered. And that's it, we're done. A year back I made a Python test for cybersecurity, so code will be in the description. Just copy and paste it in, totally not a virus or anything, take a go and see how much you get. Tell me in the description your score, it's very secure and safe to download, so go try it out please.